Hello, this is a virtual pathology specimen of a case of tuberculous epididymitis. We are looking at the cut section of a testis, and just to orientate ourselves, this is the testis, the epididymis, and the spermatic cord. Let's take a closer look. The epididymis is enlarged and expanded. Here is a small area where we can still appreciate the normal appearing epididymis. However, in many other areas, it is replaced by this pale yellowish appearance. And this corresponds to necrotizing granulomatous inflammation under the microscope. This often shows a cheesy, friable appearance where things appear to be falling out, and this is termed caseous necrosis. Caseous means cheesy. So we can see this kind of a cheesy, friable, broken up appearance grossly, and this translates to necrotizing granulomatous inflammation and is often seen in mycobacterial infection. In this instance, there is no direct involvement of the testicular parenchyma. However, if untreated, Tuberculous epididymitis can spread into the testicular parenchyma and also it can spread outwards into the scrotal tissues and even causing sinus formation in the scrotal skin. Let's learn a bit about tuberculous epididymitis. The root of infection is usually due to hematogenous spread, so the patient may have TB of the lungs, for example, and with seeding into the bloodstream, the microorganisms can reach the epididymis of the testis. Uncommonly, there can also be spread from a more localized infection in the urinary tract, for example, the prostate or the bladder. Clinically, the patient will present with a unilateral scrotal swelling. And you can see here that the epididymis is quite enlarged and hence this can clinically mimic malignancy. There may also be some associated pain which may radiate to the groin or the lower abdomen. And there may be, as mentioned, sinus formation into the skin of the scrotum. The infection, if untreated, may spread into the testicular parenchyma, giving rise to TB, epididymochitis, and there may also be associated hydrocele and systemic symptoms such as fever, weight loss, and night sweats. On gross examination, as we saw, the epididymis is usually enlarged, and often the infection starts in the tail of the epididymis and then moves proximally. The cut surface may appear nodular. Here we can see an example of a more fresh case where this is the testicular parenchyma and here is the involved epididymis with this very obvious nodular yellowish cheesy area. This is caseous necrosis and the epididymis may then become adherent to the testicular tissue. Also, as mentioned, the infection may spread into the testicular parenchyma, and we don't see that in this instance. These pictures and the virtual pathology specimen are found in our free online pathology resource, PathWeb. Registration is completely free, and the link is in the video description. Here is a closer up view of the epididymis where we can see this large area of caseous necrosis. We can also see another area here where the necrotic material is visible as this pale yellowish appearing cut surface. And here is a different example. We have the cut surface of the testis here and we have the involved epididymis again with these pale areas of necrosis and this is the skin of the scrotum which is not involved. Microscopically there is necrotizing granulomatous inflammation and sometimes also accompanying fibrosis. The Zeal-Nielsen stain would reveal the presence of acid fast bacilli and here we can see the epididymis which is mostly replaced by these rounded structures which represent epithelioid granulomas, and there is still a little bit of residual viable epididymal parenchyma in between. Here is a high magnification view of a Langhans giant cell. This is a multinucleated giant cell where the nuclei are arranged 
in a horseshoe shaped arrangement. And this is commonly seen in tuberculosis, though not a specific finding. There will be a separate microscopic video describing the features of tuberculous epididymal ochitis on virtual microscopy. Here is an area of necrosis that is surrounded by granulomas. And this is a high magnification view of the necrotic area with pink eosinophilic amorphous material and lots of carorectic material. And we have some multinucleated giant cells and viable epithelioid histiocytes surrounding the necrotic area. In summary, this is an example of tuberculous epididymitis where the epididymis is nodular and enlarged and appears to be largely replaced by caseous necrosis where we can see this pale yellowish cheesy appearance grossly. Thank you.